Hi guys, it's Katie, back with another edition of my vlog, and it's the end of the week, so that means it's time for the Cinema Club Sunday Roundup, where you guys get to find out what we watched this week and what we thought about those movies. So, let's jump right into it. The first movie that we watched this week was, we went back to the 70s and took a look at Close Encounters of the Third Kind, of course, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Richard Dreyfuss and um, Terry Garr amongst a whole host of other people. Um, most of you have probably seen this movie already. I, of course, had seen it multiple times in my life, but my kids had never seen it. So it was really cool to show it to them and get to see their experience of it for the first time. Um, I hadn't watched it in a long time. I think the last time I saw the movie, I was a teenager or maybe in my early 20s. It was definitely before I had had kids. Um, <laughs> as with so many of these movies, revisiting them after having become a parent, um, whenever there's a scene with a child in danger or something going wrong with the family unit, it makes me feel a lot more emotional than I would have before. So um, the scene where Terry Garr just takes the kids and gets out of there because um, Richard Dreyfuss is just freaking out and like throwing parts of the garden in through the kitchen window so that he can build the crazy um, sculpture in the middle of their living room of the Devil's Tower, I like felt that. Um, so um, it's an incredible movie. It's a science fiction masterpiece, incredible special effects. The um, the spaceships still look fantastic. Uh, the aliens, not so much. When we got to the end of the movie and they finally showed the aliens, the kids were like, what? And I said, yeah, I'm with you guys. Like, that wasn't a great actual alien encounter at the end of the movie. But man, all the stuff up until they actually show the aliens come out of the ship. Oh, amazing art direction, um, amazing special effects. The, like I said, those ships still look incredible today. Um, they stand up really well. Um, the storytelling is really good. It gets a little slow in points. I think this movie suffers from, this was the next movie that Spielberg made after Jaws and Jaws was such a box office success that I think the studio was just like, yeah, sure, Steve, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. Um, and while I, as an artist, appreciate, you know, a studio giving someone a hands-off approach so that they can fully do whatever it is their artistic vision is. Sometimes some of these guys can benefit from a little bit of oversight, a little bit of feedback telling them, oh, maybe don't do it this way. Um, so I feel like there's a, some parts where the story gets a little overly long or the storytelling gets a little bit confusing um, and you really have to be paying very close attention to fully get every single thing that's going on. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but of course, if you're you know, looking for popular success, that's a little bit of a higher bar to jump over. But of, of course he did. It was a humongous popular success and, you know, cemented for all time as one of the major, um, you know, pieces of science fiction movie history. So um, if somehow you've never seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind, recommended, still great. Like I said, it's a little slow in parts um, where they have to do all the translating back and forth parts and everything. Um, well, you know, it's all right. It just gets a little bit long and drawn out. So by the time you actually get to the end, you're a little bit tired of the movie. Not, I feel like I'm being overly critical. It's a great movie. I give it a A minus. The minus is for the long drawn outy stuff and um, those cheesy aliens at the end. But other than that, incredible movie. Um, we saw it streaming on somewhere. I know you guys can find it big popular giant movie of all time. Um, <laughs> the next thing we watched after that, a little lesser known, um, the Japanese movie from 1968, Yokai Monsters, 100 Monsters. This is the first of a trilogy of movies about yokai, uh, Japanese monsters, um, <clears throat> with really great practical effects, lots of um, puppetry and uh, some stop motion animation type of stuff showing these monsters being you know, real in the real world um, and affecting citizens in their lives. So um, there's a trilogy of movies and this one was the first one in the trilogy. It's a little bit darker than the other two. Um, and it's got sort of the backstory. Um, it really gets into the swing of everything in this second movie, which I'm looking forward to showing the kids next week. Uh, but this movie is great. It's about a... Um, there's like a rich landowner who wants to like demolish a bunch of people's housing and build a brothel. Um, and he does this um, ceremony beforehand to like get the um, the land ready where he tells the stories of a bunch of different yokai monsters. Um, but then he forgets to do this like purification ritual at the end of the ceremony. So th they're then stuck with the monsters in reality that he's called forward. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty fun. There's a bunch of different traditional monsters, um, including one of my favorite guys, uh, Kasa Obake, who I love so much. 
I have a tattoo of, I'm sure you guys have seen that guy, the jumping around on one leg um, umbrella monster. <laughs> so um, we obviously love monsters a lot here in our house. Um, so any movie that's got, you know, a ton of really cool monsters to look at and watch them interacting with people and just doing their, um, you know, it's, it's monsters, but it's comedy, right, thing. Um, fantastic movie, uh, highly recommended. Really recommend the next one in the series, which is called... Uh, Yokai Monsters Spook Warfare. That's the one we're going to watch next. If you saw The Great Yokai War, the movie from the early 2000s, I think it was like 2005 or so, is kind of a retelling of the same story as Spook Warfare. Not, not a direct remake, but obviously influenced by. Um, so if you liked uh, Great Yokai War, I would definitely recommend checking out this trilogy, uh, Yokai Monsters. Again, it starts with 100 monsters. The second one is Spook Warfare, and I'm completely blanking out on what the third movie in the trilogy is, but you guys have Google and you can figure out how to find out what the next movie is. Um, fantastic movie. You, you guys should all watch it. You'll, you'll, if you like what we like, you'll really like this movie. <laughs> um, <clears throat> then um, to spin things around from funny haha -ha monsters to not funny at all, um, we decided to watch the 2011 movie Contagion, directed by Steven Soderbergh. I had noticed that it was trending on YouTube. A lot of people are watching it right now because of all the you know, coronavirus stuff that's going on out there. And so I asked Sean if he wanted to watch it with me on one of the nights when the kids were playing video games or something and they didn't want to watch a movie with us. And he said yes. And boy, who did that movie do a number on me. I um, am getting over a cold right now. So the combination of feeling a little bit under the weather, the current news about the coronavirus, and then this movie, which is very, very effective. Um, boy, the first like 45 minutes of the movie, I was like gripping my armrests of my chair and I kept saying to Sean, you know, like, I might have to turn this off. I'm not sure. I, th I think I'm okay. And I was okay. I made it through the whole movie, but man, it was so tense. Um, Soderbergh does such a good job of um, just showing a sick person walking around coming into contact with all of these different other people and objects and public places and things and lingering the camera on something that the sick person has just touched after coughing or whatever. Um, it just, the whole thing at the beginning made me go, oh God, this is awful. Um, um, like any like, you know, big zombie movie or major ap apocalyptic global event um, type of movie, the beginning half of it is a lot more exciting and um, scary and thrilling. And then it kind of calms down a little bit. It's still good in the second half. And the resolution is, is it's good storytelling. But boy, the first half is like really, really dynamite. So, um, and Soderbergh's use of colors in his shots are really amazing. It's like every time we're in a new scene, it's like everything is green or everything is yellow or everything is blue. And the... Um, the tone that he is just able to set by using these different palettes for these different scenes, depending on whether we're, you know, in a casino where a sick person is touching someone else's poker chips, or whether we're in a hospital where people are, you know, attempting to get well and they can't from this illness that's killing everyone. Um, his use of color is just really, really great. Um, the other thing I would say is I, th I think I didn't see this movie when it came out because it looks like it's starring Gwyneth Paltrow and Matt Damon, and I don't really like either one of them that much as actors, and so I think that's why I passed on it when it came out, but um, they're only in the movie for a very small part of it, and uh, I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow gets killed in like the first 10 minutes of the movie or something, so. <laughs> um, anyhow, if, if you're like me and you maybe don't like those actors, don't let that put you off of seeing this movie because they're only in it for a very small part of it. They're sort of the trigger at the beginning and then everything starts spreading out and going more and more haywire and the story just develops from there. So um, Contagion, 2011, um, highly recommended, but also with caution. If you are a high anxiety person, someone who's affected a lot about this um, story in the news about the coronavirus, you know, maybe pass on this one. But if you feel like you can do it, it's a great movie. And I, I enjoyed it once I made it past that tense. Like I said, the, the first half hour, I was really just, um, but I stuck with it and I'm glad I did because um, it's it's fun to get yourself you know kind of worked up like that. That's part of the, the great thing about movies as an art form, right? Um, let's see, I've checked my notes. Oh, we spent the rest of our movie time this week watching Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, my kids had been asking to watch these movies for a while. Um, they had only ever seen the uh, 1960s Batman movie um, with the people from the TV show in it. And then they've seen uh, 
the first Tim Burton Batman movie, but none of the sequels to that one. But, um, you know, they're on the internet. They've seen the stuff about Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, and Henry was really coming at me hard about, Mom, can we watch these other Batman movies, especially after we watched Joker a few weeks ago? So I said, yeah, yeah, well, you know, we'll get to him. We'll put him on the list. And he kept going, Mom, Mom, can we watch these? And I said, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's watch all three right in a row, um, not on the same day. We watched them over the course of three days. Um, but it was really fun to revisit these movies. Sean and I saw all three when they came out. Um, we saw the first and third ones in the theater. We weren't able to see Dark Knight in the theater because we had two small kids when that one came out. So we just watched it at home. But um, all three movies held up really well. Um, they're quality movies. They're really good superhero movies. They're good um, crime caper movies, not just superhero movies, right? The second one is like a, has like a great heist in it. Um, and they're just, they're good, co solid cops and robbers movies, but also superhero movies, right? Um, and of course, Batman movies. Um, I, if you watched, um, when I did my review of the Joker, I talked about how I actually don't like Batman as a character that much. Um, and I actually didn't care for Christian Bale as Batman at all in these movies. Um, I thought he made a good Bruce Wayne. I didn't buy him as Batman and boy, I didn't like that bat voice he was using. Ugh. Um, but... Overall, the movies themselves are incredible, and the characters who Batman is surrounded by are what make the movies. I mean, um, Michael Caine as Alfred and uh, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox, I, in my opinion, just make the trilogy between the two of them. Um, Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon, fantastic. Um, and then everyone in their performances as the various villains in the three movies does a great job. Um, the first one is Batman Begins, right, which features Russell Ghoul and the Scarecrow as the villains in that movie. And then Scarecrow or Dr. Crane, who is the Scarecrow, actually appears in the next two movies also, which is kind of cool. Um, that one's really fun. It um, visually held up really well. There was a couple of moments where they showed like shots of the train rolling through the city and it was like kind of crappy CGI. And I went, oh, that would have been cooler if you did a model, but... It also would have been really expensive to do a model, so I get why you didn't. Um, everything other than the, the the obvious CGI trains actually held up visually really well. I felt like the effects were great. Um, and the storytelling in that one is pretty good. I think it's the weakest of the trilogy, but I, again, all three recommended um, viewing. They All three of them held up really well, and we had a ton of fun watching all three of them. Um, but you guys know me. I'm a critic, and I like pick at things, so... <laughs> um, the second one, The Dark Knight, is, in my opinion, the best of the three of them. And I think most people think that also, um, partly because Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker is so good. But also, I think it's just um, the most solidly written story of the three of them. Um, the third one kind of gets off into some weird territory at points. Um, but the, that second one is really tight, even though it's pretty long. Um, it's got great storytelling. The pacing is really good. Um, from that first heist with the Joker's gang robbing the bank, um, incredible scene, to all the different um, toys and gadgets that Batman gets and the various chases and everything that happens in that movie. Um, it's just, it's really good. It holds up really, really well. Um, we really enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it. All Everyone who watched it thought that that was definitely the best out of those three movies. Um, I am sad that I never got to see it in the theater. Maybe I'll get to one day. Um, it's certainly a beautiful movie. Um, they, all three of them are just visual stunners. So, um, you know, if you can see them in a movie theater, do. I know some people might be freaked out because of the theater shooting that happened when the third movie was released. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm the type, I'm like, you know, we can't let the terrorists and the bad people in the world stop us from enjoying our lives. And one of the things I love to do is go see movies. So... I go see movies and I don't uh, worry about there being any kind of a thing like that. It's statistically improbable. Um, there you go. Um, sorry, lost my train of thought looking back at my notes here. Oh, so the third movie, Dark Knight Rises, um, we have uh, the return of Ra's al Ghul and then of course Bane. Tom Hardy as Bane is great in the third movie. Um, he does so much expressive acting without being able to see his mouth, right? He's got that like mask over his nose and mouth, which... Um, it makes it very hard to convey what the character is, you know, saying. He's got the funny sounding voice and he can't really make a facial expression, but he does such a great job with his body language and his eye um, language, I guess is what you want to call that, um, with conveying what that character is about and what he's doing. 
Um, we all, again, thoroughly enjoyed the third movie. Um, it's, I think, the longest of the three, and it could be edited down a little. It's, it drags in its storytelling at some points um, where, you know, it's like important stuff for you to find out exposition wise, but there's, there's just some parts where it gets, a, it's a little too complicated. It kind of reminded me, um, of a James Bond movie, like maybe some of the like higher level, what, why is this character doing this? And what's the motivation for that thing got, um, a bit, a bit more tricky than what I would think the target audience for a Batman movie is, which is like a 13 year old boy. Right. Um, so I mean, maybe a little older, but come on, it's a Batman movie. Right. <laughs> um, so I would say if the, if that third movie could be maybe re-edited or I don't know if you could edit it correctly, but it felt like a little too long and a little too convoluted in parts. And if they had just like tightened it up a tiny bit, it would have been a lot better. It really gets going um, by the time we get to the prison pit and the football um, game scene. But the whole kind of like, oh, Batman's gone and we got to like, what are we going to do? Can we get him to come back? I don't know. You know, I know it's a comeback story, so that's important for the beginning of the movie, but it's just kind of boring. So um, again, I'm recommending it, but um, not as good as The Dark Knight. Um, but I think that Dark Knight Rises was better than Batman Begins. So uh, if that makes sense. But we, we again, we had a really fun time watching all three movies. Um, it was pretty cool to watch them all three in a row instead of having them separated by several years of time, which is, of course, how they really came out. Um, so if you haven't ever seen these movies and you are interested in the genre, or maybe you have seen them, but you haven't revisited them, I would recommend them. Um, I think, uh, they were great. You know, I, I keep saying that I'm just kind of stumbling over it. So I'll wrap up uh, my Christopher Nolan Batman movie review there. Um, it did inspire me. I have had, um, both Memento and Inception on the list to show the kids for a while. And they so enjoyed these movies. I think I might, um, give them one of those next week for our cinema club watch list. I'm not quite sure what next week is going to hold for us. Um, I think the kids really want me to take them to see the Sonic the Hedgehog movie at the theater. So we'll see if I wind up getting dragged to that. Um, you'll have to tune in next week to find out. Um, that's about it for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, Cinema Club Sunday Roundup. Thanks for watching. I'll check you guys later.